there is just a minefield of website builders out there, which I personally think if you're a business owner and you're building a website for the first time, can be very confusing, very daunting to think what is out there, what the benefits and all the rest of it. So in this video, I'm gonna do my best to break down exactly what are these different platforms are called and why you should choose one or the other. Now I'll leave down in the description below all of my recommended services for the different levels of websites that we're going to go through as well as tutorials I have on those platforms. The range goes from completely hand coded all the way down to writing zero code and not really having to care or understand at all about design. Really the coding aspect is if you are you've got something so bespoke that you want to achieve you want it to interact with all these different services and from my perspective you really want to avoid going down that route as much as possible until you've established your business and you know exactly what your service proposition is. I guess it's worth mentioning that these are things like React, Vue, Next.js, HP, Astro, Ruby on Rails. WordPress. Basically, speak to a developer and they'll chew your ears off the various different coding libraries that they can use to build your dream. But like I say, you're going to want to know an awful lot about your business before you dive into that pool. And if you're building a basic company website, this probably is massively overkill. If you're starting to develop an app, then there are platforms out there that allow you to build applications, but I think that's kind of beyond the scope of this video. Let's go to the complete other end of the spectrum and talk about no code. Wix, Squarespace, now these sorts of platforms use the pre-designed themes and they just want it to make it as easy as possible. Now these websites actually let you build shops, they let you build blogs, they let you build marketing websites. They're quite versatile. The most important thing is that you get online, you start selling your product as much as you want a custom designed website to look and behave exactly as you want this really should not be your priority right now which is why i would push you to see what you can get working with wix and it's worth diving in yourself if you're a business owner and you just want to get yourself going on it might make sense to bring someone on and they could be relatively cheap because using wix is ridiculously simple it doesn't require a university degree to actually be able to use something like wix but saying all that just to contextualize his application is really building your website in as very little time as possible. The design has already been done. You don't have to worry about that. You can do minor adjustments. You can change colors of things and whatever, but really you're leaning into those themes and templates in order to get your website up and running. Now we start coming into the more complex, should go this way, shouldn't I? Because you reverse this, which is the more no code, uh, area and what these enable you to do is to really start being more expressive with your design with your branding tools like webflow web studio um we web uh div hunt they're all it get, geared towards uh, marketing websites a few of them like toddle and div hunt um and we web they are they allow you to build applications website applications which is different from an e-commerce blog or marketing website this is like you log in and you can do things with a dashboard maybe that's a separate subject altogether but we're strictly talking about websites and and of marketing websites in in this video things like webflow offer an e-commerce solution which i'll point a video up in the up in the cards really i don't recommend webflow for e-commerce stuff probably going to want to use something like uh, Squarespace just because I have a sneaky suspicion that it's just going to stay in and be in a stagnated state of development so you're really not going to be able to progress with your shop should the needs require so you know take that with a pinch of salt but ultimately when you start getting into this world you're really going to start developing a sense of what how my brand is going to look next we start go going into more coding but with a head start and that's where yeah again that's where you start going into the shopify that's where you start going into the wordpress world where they you can get download themes you can code alongside those themes and, and extend those themes and really start being more advanced more integrated with more advanced solutions and again you start to really need to know what you're doing in this world or, or your business proposition so again wouldn't recommend it but the option is there and then that's when that's where we start to meet the absolute coding aspect now i think it's worth saying because clients come to me time and time again with this idea that they build something right in the beginning and it lasts for the entire duration of their company now it's really really important to know that websites are an organic 
beast. I said this in my last video, every company should revisit whether their website is serving their current needs, particularly if you're early on in your journey and you start to change what you offer, you change who you're speaking to and various things like that. So really this idea of getting it right first time just needs to be scrapped. Build what is right for you at that time with the idea that you will or you should need to change your website, whether it's you change platform or whether you just need to clean things up. The amount of projects that we've done where there's just so much gunk all over the website, right back from when it first started to the a feature that was developed last week. There always needs to be this reset period between, I would say between three and five years, just looking at your website and seeing where it's blocking you, where it's leaking money and where it's not serving your purpose. So a, a large part of this video is, is really identifying what your, where your current requirements are in your business journey and just kind of kicking the can down the road of like, well, about three years, five years, we're probably gonna to wanna to change things anyway. There's no point in trying to stand that test of time because even if it does keep you going, it is gonna be a mess to work with, particularly when you start coding things, it's gonna be an absolute mess to work with and you're gonna to wanna to do a big reset anyway even on a no-code tool. So we really need to get rid of this idea of trying to build something that's gonna last. So that is the scale of things when we talk about websites. Each of those phases aligns with your journey as a business owner. So if, you, if you're really starting out fresh or you, you, know, you just need to get something online, I think Wix should be your goal. But remember, you're not gonna have that finesse control. And as you go down that list towards no code, like Webflow, Web Studio, you're gonna start to ha have access to that control of the design and how it integrates with some of the services that you might offer, whether it's your project management tool, whether it's your CRM and things like that. If this stuff doesn't make any sense to you, you already know that you've come too far. And, and then we start to get into more coding worlds where you can really have a lot of control over those things, but you're gonna to wanna to hire some people and then you get to the full-blown development design team. So that's really a very high level breakdown of the landscape of building websites in 2024. Even some of these services add transitionary features. So for instance, Webflow have their themes. On the WordPress side of things, they have, in my opinion, very underrated no-code builders like Bricks. But I don't wanna to get too deep into that sort of stuff because you can, you can see how that starts to get very, very technical and nuanced. So I recommend if you do wanna explore those more nuanced options that are available to you, head to FlowSafe dev and you can speak to me for an hour with flow state go like subscribe if you haven't already and until next time happy no coding